We are celebrating 10 years of a month of design. So how did this month of design get started and what can we look forward to? Yes, so the month of design was started in 2011 by Matthew Clayson and Melinda Anderson. Uh, Matt was the original executive director of Design Corps and Melinda was leading the programming at that time. So the first festival was one week. It was called the Detroit Design Festival. And it had about 80 happenings happening all over the city. It was a celebration of independent design. Since then, it's evolved into a whole month. It still is a multidisciplinary festival, an annual, annual festival occurring throughout the city. This year, we have virtual, outdoor, and time-ticketed indoor events. Now, that is one of the first things that I was curious about. A lot of art and design is something that, you know, people have to interact with on a daily basis. So how have you guys been working around the current pandemic and all the guidelines that we need to follow to actually be able to have people go out and see this stuff in person? It started with contacting the designers after the open call. So we started 2020, big dreams, big plans. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We launched our open call in February and it closed in April. So once the government shut down, which was in March, we said, well, is this festival important to designers? Do they see a value in it? Do they still want to do it? So I immediately started calling, you know, the designers that had applied and talking to them. And a lot of them said, you know what, I have an idea. I have a solution that I want to share. I have a talk that I want to propose of how we can address this new reality. We need the festival now more than ever. And, you know, I can do my talk virtual. Oh, I'm going to do an outdoor installation. So it's through talking to the designers that we said, our community still wants to do this and they see a value in it and we're going to continue. Yeah. And by using time ticketed events and kind of no touch or very low touch outdoor things, you know, a lot of the concerns around having large groups and small spaces our signature events like Easter Market After Dark and design crawls and some of the other things that we're doing. We're not doing those this year precisely because of the pandemic. But I think what's been wonderful is to see how our community has really pivoted, that we have a, the strongest slew of exhibitions that we've ever had uh, for a month of design. And many of those are, are fully accessible virtually um, from our website. So it's just it's just really been great to see how everyone has adapted um, and, the, and the really meaningful ideas that they're putting forward even in this time. So we hear the word design and I'm sure as with a lot of people and same goes for me, you can think of a million different things. So what type of things are we going to be seeing when it comes to design? Is it paint? Is it sculpture? Is it, you know, city planning? What, what can we look forward to? Sure. It's a lot of events that are dealing with and addressing, of course, the global pandemic. Um, so we have our new social reality, um, the future of urgency. Olga's going to be on a panel. Um, Noor from Form and Seek, she has an exhibition called Never Normal. Were things ever normal? You know, and what does it mean? What does normal mean in exploring that? Um, we have some LTU and CCS students that made work during the pandemic. What is it, how does that change the way that you work in your process of designing when you can't go to the studio because the studio shut down and you're making products from your house? Yeah, and design for us is everything, you know, we consider it creative problem solving. So it's all the disciplines. It's applied um, in many ways, but that can mean visual art in public spaces too, because there's usually a context, and especially for the types of things that you'll see in the uh, month of design program. That um, you know, there's a lot. Usually, the the, the designers that we're featuring, you know, we have three values that we operate uh, with: collaborative relationships, accessible experiences. Um, accessible opportunities and diverse experiences. And a lot of the um, the public um, kind of art type type of things that you'll see in the month of design um, usually involve community, you know, community engagement, community participation. Um, so it's the full full gamut from architecture to product design to, to graphic and visual design um, to um, art and public spaces. Is there an installation, a talk, a uh, an art piece that 
really speaks to you that you think would and is going to be really impactful when you know people actually get a chance to interact with it although let's start with you well, I have I have two, um, so I'm going to use my executive privilege to have two. But uh, one is the Science Gallery um, Future uh, Present Exhibition because I was I was one of the five curators for that um, that exhibition, and I think it's it's uh, immersive and experiential. Um, it's not a typical exhibition where you just ha you're looking at an object. This is really about engaging um, the, the 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 person as they as they think about. Um, design in a time of urgency. And then the second one is uh, the Toyota Lecture Series um, event that the College for Creative Studies is doing on um, the, uh, September 23rd, featuring Root of Two. And Root of Two has been working with Design Corps to um, develop um, a training program around inclusive design practices um, for Design Corps, our city of design partners, and the college. And um, Cezanne Charles and John Marshall will be talking about that work today. And I think it's really, it's really important in this moment as we think about um, you know, sy systemic um, forms of oppression and uh, marginalization, how we can create new processes, new ways of working that start to break um, those systemic um, um, uh, forces.